Welcome to our Energy Connect studio at Egypt's 2023. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me again, Lorenzo Samarelli, Chairman and CEO of Baker Hughes. Thank you so much for joining me again. Julian, good to be here. Always good to have you, Dan. Um, I just want to start off with, do you think the world is moving fast enough when it comes to energy transition? So I think the obvious answer is no. And there's an opportunity to accelerate the progress that we're making towards energy transition. I think what's come to light is really the energy trilemma over the course of the last uh, few years with affordability, sustainability, and security. And so as we approach it, we can do things faster, but we have to do it also with the backdrop of ensuring that we retain the trilemma in balance. And I think uh, technology comes to the forefront of that and also continuing investments and also continuing the collaboration amongst all the stakeholders. So uh, more that we can do, uh, but I'm optimistic as we go forward. Well, that's always good to be optimistic. And well, obviously here in Egypt, how can they support the transition? Obviously on the back of having COP27 and Sharm El Sheikh last year, maybe discussions here in Egypt about that. You know, I think Egypt is in a very interesting position and you look at what it's been able to achieve over the course of the last six years, really going from a net importer to an exporter. The discoveries that have been made with regards to gas, the uh, field of Zor that obviously came onto mm -hmm. uh, production, but then also the way it's becoming a hub. Yeah. And I think within the uh, East Med, there's a real opportunity to create a hub out of Egypt that then provides energy to Europe. And it's not just natural gas and LNG, but it's also the progression of the energy transition mm -hmm. with the renewables, with the opportunity of blue hydrogen, with also reducing the carbon footprint here in Egypt. So a lot of good conversations since COP27 and a lot of opportunities as Egypt really positions itself for North Africa, as well as for Europe and being a central hub for energy in the future. That's good to hear. And you know, how is Baker Hughes, you know, an energy technology company driving more sustainability in the energy sector? And I know you mentioned hydrogen there, which is on a buzzword at the moment, isn't it? Well, you know, we've been at the uh, center of the energy transition since uh, we launched our own pledge in 2019. And thankfully, we've also reduced our own emissions by 23% since uh, 2019. And we're continuing to look at it really from uh, three aspects. The first is let's deploy energy technology that's available today. When you look at uh, valves that don't leak, you look at uh, compressors that don't leak, you look at the elimination of flaring and mm. also the recovery of flared gas, all of these are available technologies for today. At the same time, continuing to invest in areas that drive productivity and efficiency yep. and reduced emissions with the opportunity of upgrades to equipment, uh, new gas turbines that also run 100% on hydrogen, and all towards the new frontiers of CCUS, hydrogen, clean integrated power solutions. So over the course of uh, the last few years, we've invested $2.1 billion wow. in new technologies, new areas that uh, we really see position Baker Hughes, not just for today, but also for the next decade as we continue down the energy transition. Oh, well, I'll touch on that, you know, technology and how important it is. What about some of the digital advancements that you announced at the Baker Hughes annual meeting last month? Want to hear a bit more about that? Yeah, we really look at digital as being part of what's necessary to really drive lower emissions, yeah. increased uptime. And it's a succession of different investments that we've made. And it culminated in last week really announcing two suites of capabilities. One on the oil field services and equipment with Lupita. And that is really from an intelligent operations perspective, well construction. Lucipa is something that allows all of the information to be centered in one location and be visible for the operator and enhance the well production. And we've also announced an investment in Corva that helps us from an illustration of that and visualization. On the industrial and energy technology side, likewise, we've got Cordon that we announced last week. Mm -hmm. And this brings in the reliability, the uptime from the industrial assets that we have, as well as the balance of plants. So the offering now extends oil field services and equipment, Lucipa, industrial and energy technology Cordon, and really provides the capability of enhancing digital architecture from an open source perspective. And I think that's quite important, that sort of open source element and then bringing it all together and on a global scale. Very much so. And I think what we found, and also through years of learning, because we didn't just start digital now, is 
Having your own platform is not the necessarily best approach. It's actually being application specific and then having the right application to fit in where your customers and your partners need it from an efficiency perspective and build it on their platform. And that's really where we've gone with the suite of applications that we have across both business segments. Well, really good to hear Lorenzo and I look forward to seeing all of that come into action. And again, just really appreciate you coming by the Energy Connect studio. Julian, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Lorenzo.